Hi everyone. In this video we're going to talk about the types of resonance structures and there's two types that we would concern ourselves about which we can differentiate using formal charges. So the first type is called equivalent resonance structures and the way you can figure out that a resonance structure is equivalent to another resonance structure is by looking at their formal charges and what you will see is that they have the same distribution of formal charges in all the atoms. An example here is shown by the ozone uh, molecule. So you can do formal charge calculation with each of the atom in ozone and if you do that, this oxygen on the left for the top structure, we have two resonance structures, we have A and B. If you do it for the each oxygen atom in the each resonance structure, you'll find that this one would be zero, this one would be plus one, and this one would be negative one. And as you can see, when you add these three numbers together, you get zero, which is, of course, the charge of ozone is zero. It's a molecule. Okay, so that tells you that you're doing the formal charge calculation correctly. It's a verification. Um, if you do it for the bottom one, you'll see that this one is negative one, this one is plus one, and this one is zero. So what I mean by the same distribution is that you have these atoms, and all the atoms have exactly the same uh, formal charges. Okay, and... Um, in the way they are distributed. So you get zero, plus one, and negative one, and they're all on oxygen. Okay. Let me give you another example with two different atoms in an ion, so that might give you a better feel for what I mean by the same distribution. So carbonate is a good example of this. If you do carbonate, you're going to have a valence of four for carbon, and then I have three oxygen, and then I have two more for the negative charge. So that will give me 24 electron. Carbon has to be the central atom. And so if I were to do the bonding correctly, it should look like this. Okay? Uh, you can count this. This is all 24 electrons total. Okay? Now, that's one resonance structure, right? But, of course, it's possible for me to draw it any other way with the double bond. So, for example, I can draw it. I'm going to draw a smaller one right here. But this would be one other resonance structure. Okay. Another possibility is to have the double bond at the bottom, so you can have this as another resonance structure. Okay. So the question is, you have three resonance structures, let's call this one A, let's call this one B, let's call this one C. And let's take a look at what uh, their formal charge distribution is. If you were to calculate, go ahead and calculate it, you'll find that this is zero, this one is negative one, this one is also negative one, and this one is zero for the carbon. If you go for structure B, you'll find the carbon is zero, this oxygen is zero, this oxygen is negative one, and this oxygen is negative one. You go to structure C, you find this oxygen negative one, this oxygen zero, the carbon is zero, and this oxygen negative one. Okay? So, what do I mean by the same distribution? This is another example of an equivalent resonance structure. And what you see is that the carbon is always zero, and the three oxygens, two of them are always negative one, and one of them is always zero. So that tells you that they're equivalent resonance structures. Okay? So the other type of resonance structure is called non-equivalent resonance structures. Okay? And the reason why they're called non-equivalent is, uh, as you'll see in a second, when you calculate formal charge distribution among all the atoms in these resonance structures, you'll find that each resonance structure has a different formal charge distribution compared to the other one. The example we're going to use here is BrO3, the bromate ion, which we also used in the prior video to discuss how to calculate formal charges. Okay, so that, you know, you'd be a little bit more comfortable with using it because we already saw it before. I'm going to draw a couple of different resonance structures for BrO3 minus, and then we're going to calculate the formal charge for each one of them. Okay, so here I have drawn three different resonance structures for BrO3. And as we'll discuss uh, in a second, they're all legitimate structures, and that's why they're all resonance structures. So I'm going to call this one A, this one B, and this one C. So we can discuss them each and then also calculate formal charges for each one of them. Okay? Now, if you look carefully, the first one is the one that, structure A in this case, is the one that we actually did uh, draw in the formal charge video. And we show that we can calculate the formal charges for all of these guys. And that's going to be negative 1 for this, negative 1 for this, negative 1 for this, and positive 2 for the bromine. 
Okay, so you can go ahead and do those calculations again, but we did it in the prior video, so I don't want to spend too much time doing it again, going through step by step. Okay, you should know how to calculate formal charges at this point. Now let's go to structure B. Now let's just first calculate the formal charges before we discuss the actual structure. If I go with this oxygen, it's going to be negative 1. This oxygen would be 0. This oxygen would be negative 1. And this bromine now, you get 1, 2, 3, 4 bonding and two, alone pair, uh, two electrons and lone pairs, so then it's going to be plus one, okay? You can, again, do those calculations yourself. Now, what is the issue with this structure? The only issue that you might be able to come up with is the fact that bromine here has more than eight electrons. In other words, it violates the octet rule, right? It has ten electrons in its valence shell. However, if you go back to the periodic table, you'll see that bromine actually is beyond the third period, right? It's third period and beyond, remember, we can have expanded octets. So in other words, this structure is actually, even though it looks a little funny, it's okay. Uh, it doesn't violate Lewis' uh, struct model, I should say. It violates the octet rule, but it's allowed, okay? It's one of those exceptions. So in other words, this is a perfectly reasonable structure to draw, and it has this distribution of formal charge. Now, even before we go to structure C, you should be able to clearly see here that there is a difference between structure A and structure B in terms of formal charge distribution. Why? If you look, in structure A, the bromine is plus 2. In structure B, the bromine is plus 1. That automatically tells you that it's a different structure. Because if it's equivalent resonance structure, bromine in 1 and 2 in A and B would have the same charge as we did earlier with the carbonate. With the carbonate, you see the carbon is always 0, whether it's structure A, B, or C. But here, now we're talking about this bromine. The bromine is completely different charge. 1 is plus 2 and the other one plus 1. You can also look at the oxygen, the three oxygens, right? You might think that they're all the same oxygen, but if you look, in structure A, all the three oxygens have a charge of negative 1, but in structure B, two of them are negative 1, one of them is 0. So clearly that's not the same distribution, okay? I want to, again, compare it to the carbonate. In the carbonate, you have three oxygens, but two of the oxygens are always negative 1, one of the oxygens is always 0, okay? That's the same for all three structures. I hope that gives you a good idea of what I mean by non-equivalent versus equivalent. I'm going to do one more resonance structure of bromate just to give you an idea of the non-equivalent property of this. Again, I would calculate formal charges. This oxygen right here would be negative 1. Okay? This oxygen would be negative 1. This one would be 0. This other one would also be 0. And then if you look at the bromine itself, it's actually going to also be 0 in this case. Okay. Again, if you compare this with the other two, you can see that now, if you look A, B, and C, the bromine in each case has a different formal charge. One is plus two, the other one is plus one, the other one is zero. Same thing with the three oxygens distribution. You start to see differences, very clear differences between A, B, and C. And again, the only problem with this structure, if you call it a problem, is that it has 12 electrons around the bromine. But that's okay because bromine is beyond the third period, so it can have expanded octet because it has those empty 3d uh, orbitals that it can use, okay? So, in other words, all these three structures are legitimate, and the question is then, how do we differentiate between them? In the equivalent resonance structure case, it's not difficult. We just say we have three different structures. The only thing we need to do is take an average of these three, and that would represent our experimental structure. That's what we discuss in our first video of resonance structures. But now, you have three resonance structures, and they have different properties, right? So the question is, how do we take into account of these different properties? Is the real structure just an average of all the resonance structures, or, or is there something uh, else about it, okay? And what we'll do in the next video is discuss how to pick the best structure among these non-equivalent resonance structures.